Open your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 20. We're emphasizing this first part of the year about prayer. And I trust that you are making a practice to pray every day for God to direct your life and prepare you for what's ahead and for you to pray for the needs of others. Last Sunday, we read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 where the Apostle Paul prayed for healing from his thorn in the flesh. Today, I want to read you about a, another man who prayed for healing. This man's name was Hezekiah. Duh, uh, can God heal the sick? He certainly can. If you ask the question, can God do whatever, the answer is going to be yes. God can do anything and everything that he wants to do. Does God always heal the sick? Not always. Every day I pray for the sick. Uh, quite often, regularly, I pray with the sick. And they're not always healed. Not right then anyway. The Apostle Paul was a great man of faith, a man whose whole life was dedicated to God, and yet we read last week that when he had this thorn in the flesh that he described as a messenger of Satan to buffet him, he prayed and it didn't, he didn't get healed. God's answer to his prayer for healing was, I'm not going to heal you, but I will give you grace sufficient to your need. And God turned what was a burden into a blessing. God used Paul's weakness to remind him to trust God for everything, to remind him that he needed God to do everything. So sometimes when we, the sick, pray, God does heal. Sometimes he doesn't. But whether he heals or not, God is going to answer that prayer according to his plan and according to his purpose. It's certainly not something I understand, but you know what? If I could understand God, I'd be God myself. And I'd be as smart as he is. Just because we don't understand God does not mean that God's not at work. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a plan. Because God does have a plan for every one of us. We read last week about a man who prayed for healing and didn't get it. Today we read about a man who prayed for healing and he did get it. 2 Kings chapter 20. You can read it on the screen or you can read with me. Stand with me please if you um, can and would like to as we respect God's word. It says in those days, verse 1, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out of the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go, down, uh, go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of, of Ahaz. Thank you. You can be seated. The prayer for healing. We notice the person. Who is this man? He's called Hezekiah. Hezekiah means the Lord strengthens. That's a good name to have, Hezekiah. God strengthens. He was a, a great builder. He built a, an aqueduct 
to bring water from the mountains down into Jerusalem. And that thing was built uh, uh, over 2,000 years ago, almost 3,000 years ago. And I understand it's still there. You can still see it. So he was quite a, a builder. He was a man of great letters. He uh, gathered together much of the Psalms and Proverbs and organized them in the form and the fashion that we have today. Like Asa and Jehoshaphat and Josiah, his model, his personal role model was King David. And Hezekiah, as we read uh, the stories about him in the Bible, he was not a perfect man, but he did try to please the Lord and obey him. His great uh, attribute was that he was a great reformer to the nation of Israel. His father was not a godly man. His father had closed the doors of the house of God. And Hezekiah opened them back up. The people had stopped uh, celebrating the Passover. And Hezekiah reinstituted the celebration of the Passover, which was a memorial to the day when God delivered the Israelites out of the slavery in Egypt. He destroyed the uh, high places and the pagan idols that the people worshipped. So he was a, a, a great king and a great religious leader to the people of Israel. The Bible says in 2 Kings 18 that he trusted in the God of Israel so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah nor any that were before him. For he stayed with the Lord and departed not from following him. He kept the commandments which the Lord God commanded to Moses and the Lord was with him. And he prospered him whether, uh, wheresoever he went. So he was a great leader, a great godly man, a man who, uh, who made a difference in the lives of the people of Israel. That's the man, the person. But he had a problem. The problem was something that we can relate to. He got sick. It, when we read the description of it, at first it doesn't sound really serious. He had a boil, it says. An ulcer, an inflammation of some sort on the outside of his body. Now, you know, I, most, a lot of you have had something like that. I've had ulcers or boils on my skin and they, are, they hurt. They're painful. But that doesn't sound uh, very fatal. Uh, but this, uh, this boil that he had uh, was very serious. It was serious enough that uh, the prophet came and said, you need to get your house in order, you're going to die. I've never heard of anybody dying from a boil. Perhaps it was a, an indication of some type of infection that he had on the inside of his body that was not going to get better. But he was sick. He was bedridden. The indication is that, that when uh, he was told he was going to die, that he didn't have the strength to get out of bed or get on his knees to pray. So he had to just turn and face the wall to pray. So he was dying. He was sick and he was bedridden. And he was dying. This man was a good man. He was a good leader. He was an accompli he'd accomplished great things. He was only 39 years old. And yet, and he just had something, you know, painful, but not something that most people would consider deadly, but he was told by the prophet, you're going to die. Some of you have perhaps sat where uh, Hezekiah was, where you've had a doctor tell you we've got uh, we've done tests we've got a diagnosis you're not going to make it we don't know any way we've done everything we can do to treat this illness and we don't see any way that you're going to recover that's the message that he got he was just 39 years old in the middle of his life in the, in the beginning of his life really he was doing great things for the people of Israel he was doing great things for God and all of a sudden the word came uh, it's about over. You need to set your things, set your affairs in order because you're not going to survive this. He had a big problem, didn't he? But he had a prayer. Norman Vincent Peale said that when life beats you to your knees, there's a good position from which to pray. Sometimes in order for us to look up, God has to knock us down. That was not the case with Hezekiah. It seems that he... Uh, the pattern of his life was to trust God. And so many times we read about Hezekiah. The Bible tells us that he encountered a lot of problems. And every time he had a problem, and every time he faced a challenge, that's what he did. He turned to God in prayer and asked for God's help. 
it uh, would have been easy for him to have become proud, which, by the way, later on he did. We'll talk about that maybe later. But uh, he, uh, when he told he was sick and he was dying, he turned to God in prayer. There was a, a situation that had occurred, I believe, earlier. Some think, think this was afterward. There was an occasion where the Assyrians came uh, under a leader named Sennacherib, and they surrounded the, the city of Jerusalem with 185,000 soldiers and demanded that the people surrender. And Hezekiah, it said, he spread his troubles before the Lord. And God told him, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of it. And that, uh, that night, 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died in their sleep. He was, he was a man who learned, had learned to depend on God when, in all things, even when there was trouble. We uh, have a, a song, an old song that we sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That's a good song. And part of that song says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. This was Hezekiah's practice. He, it was not something that he turned to only when he was sick. The one side of the sign uh, we put up this week says, Make prayer your uh, first response, not your last resort. And that was something Hezekiah would agree with. He did turn to God when, uh, in prayer when the messenger said, You're going to die. But that was uh, something he did all the time, every day. He trusted God. That was his practice. Where's the place? Where did he pray? It says he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. He, didn't, he was so sick he couldn't get out of bed and go to the house of God and pray. He was so sick that he couldn't get out and get on his knees and pray. But all he could do was just, he turned his back because he wanted to turn away from the people. He wanted to focus on God. And he turned his face to the wall and he prayed. That's a reminder to us that you can pray anywhere. I'm certainly not going to discourage you from going to church. I'm glad you do. And we certainly can pray here. But you can pray anywhere that you are. Jonah prayed from the belly of the whale and God heard him. You know. Daniel prayed from the palace when his life was in danger. And God heard him. Uh, other people, have, uh, Paul and Silas, prayed from a jail cell in Philippi. And God heard them. You can pray anywhere. Since God is everywhere, then you can pray anywhere. And he, he prayed with his, back, with his face to the wall. He made a plea. He said, O Lord, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember how I've walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in your sight. He cried to God and said, God, you know, I've tried to live my life in a way that's pleasing to you. I want to continue to live it pleasing to you. And he made that plea. He cried out to the Lord in pain. It says that he wept sore. This was not a, uh, some empty words that he prayed. This was not a memorized prayer that he prayed. It was not, as the Bible says, like the heathen pray, vain repetitions. But he prayed and he poured his heart out to God. James says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And the fact that he was crying indicates his sincerity and his fervency. He meant what he was saying. He meant what he was praying. It came from the depths of his heart. He prayed and he got a promise. He got an answer from God. God always answers when we pray. He may not give the answer that we expect. He may not give the answer that we desire. I'm sure when Paul prayed to the Lord for healing from his thorn in the flesh, he wanted it to go away. He expected it to go away because he knew that God had the power to heal. And he thought, uh, Paul thought he could do a lot better job with his ministry if God, took, if God healed him and took away the thorn. But God doesn't always see things the way we do. His ways are mysterious to us. But in this case... He heard Hezekiah's prayer. He answered it in a way that pleased Hezekiah. The Lord said, I've heard thy prayer. I've seen thy tears and I will heal thee on the third day. You'll get up and you'll go to the house of God. The word heard here 
not only means that God, that, that the words that he said registered in God's ear, but it means that God would take action with what he heard. This promise included a recovery. God said to him, you're not going to die like Isaiah told you to start with, but I'm going to heal you. He to, it, it included a promise of rescue. God said, I'm going to take care of that Assyrian army that's surrounded you right now. Don't worry about that. I'm going to take care of that too. And it included a reversal. It says that, uh, that God was going to turn the shadow back 10 degrees. Now that means he was going to reverse the uh, rotation. Uh, he was going to re reverse the revolution of the earth around the sun 10 degrees. And if my math is right, and I, I haven't done a lot of math in a long time, I think that means 40 minutes. If it's 10 degrees, I believe that means that God was going to turn the sun back, turn the, actually, in our terms, we turn the rotation of the earth back 40 minutes. Now, in the spring every year, we turn time back, we turn our clocks backward, but we never turn the earth backward or the sun backward. But that's what God did as proof of, that he was going to do this, as proof to Hezekiah that he had the power to heal him from this deadly disease, God reversed time by, again, by what I figured, by 40 minutes. He didn't just turn the clock back. He turned the sun back to, as proof of his power. He had this promise. But God also gave him a prescription. He told, the, he told, uh, told him, now you go and you get you a lump of figs and you put it on your boil. Now, some people say that there's an inconsistency here because God said, I'll heal you. But then on the other hand, he told him to go get some medicine and put on his sore. Is there a, a contradiction here? If God heals us, does that mean some would say, well, if uh, you have faith in God to heal, you don't need to go see the doctors. You don't need to take your medicine. That if God said to him, Isaiah, uh, said to Hezekiah, I'm going to heal you, that he didn't need to make a plaster out of these figs and, and do that. He should just trust God. But, you know, sometimes God heals people immediately without human means. Sometimes he uses doctors and medicine and surgery and radiation and chemotherapy and all these things. But God uh, can heal us in different ways. But whether it's uh, without human uh, help or whether it is with the assistance of surgery and doctors and medication, if healing comes, it comes from God. All the healing we have, if we're ever sick and we get well, it's because God heals us. There is no contradiction there. And the scripture says that Hezekiah... I heard, I heard, God heard Hezekiah's prayer and God gave him what he asked for and God healed him. And on the third day, he went to the house of God and, and worshipped him there. Uh, Hezekiah didn't get up off his sick bed and say, well, that, look how tough I am. I fought death and I won. He didn't go brag to his friends about how tough he was and how he just resolved in his mind, his heart, that he wasn't going to give up. But in Isaiah 38, there is an account of the same story. And there it tells us that after he got up off his bed, he went to the house of God on the third day like God said he would. And he sang this uh, song to, of praise to the Lord. It says that this is the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness, I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. What shall I say? He hath spoken unto me and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in thy love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father of the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. 
Therefore will we sing songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. God took away his deadly illness. God promised him 15 more years. God raised him up off his deathbed. And he remembered, he recognized where his healing came from. He gave credit to God for healing him. He gave praise to God for what he'd done. Remember in the New Testament in Luke 17, the Bible tells us a story about ten lepers. They had this deadly disease of leprosy. And, they, and Jesus passed by and all ten of them cried out, Lord Jesus, heal us. And he healed all ten of them. But the story concludes, but there was only one of them that came back and thanked the Lord. Thanked Jesus for healing him from his deadly disease of leprosy. And Jesus looked at the one and commended him for his praise and said, Didn't I heal ten? Where are the nine? Every one of us has experienced some kind of healing in our lives. If we hadn't, we'd be dead today. Every one of us, we have been healed through the power and the grace of God. The question is, have you given God thanks for it? Have you given God gratitude for his healing by living every day for, of your life for him? He was given up, for, uh, given up by the doctors. He was given up by the prophet. Even God said, Hezekiah, you're not going to get well. You're going to die. But he turned to prayer. He was cured. Death was chased away. The rotation of the earth was reversed. And Israel was spared from the invading army. A writer named Dr. Talmud said, The whole universe waits upon God, and the sun and the moon and the stars are not very big things to him, and he can with his little finger turn back an entire world as easily as you can set back the minute hand on your watch. That's the power of God that we're dealing with. There's a medical doctor named Dr. Dossie, who prays with his patients and has written books about prayer. He says that, he usually, that when he prays for his patients, he prays for the best outcome possible. And sometimes the patient dies. Faith understands that death sometimes is the best outcome. But believers do not fear death because for the believer, death is the final healing of the body. There is uh, sickness in this world because there is sin in this world. And the only way we're going to ever get to the place where we don't get sick and hurt anymore is get out of this world and go to heaven. And the only way we're going to do that is through death. In James chapter 5, there's a question asked. Is any among you afflicted? Is anybody sick? Let him pray. And he says, confess your faults or your weaknesses one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now God heard the prayer of Hezekiah. And God healed him and gave him 15 more years. But you need to remember, even if God heals you from one thing, eventually you're going to die from something else. If you die without Jesus... You're going to hurt and be in pain for eternity. But if you die with Jesus, that's when your total healing is going to come. And you're going to be made whole and well for eternity. Each one of us has been sick uh, with the different types of illnesses, different types of diseases. Each one of us has been healed. From some of these illnesses. Some of you are battling with illness and disease and pain today. Uh, I encourage you. Call out to God in prayer. And trust him to give the best results. Sometimes he gives immediate healing. Sometimes he gives gradual healing through medicine and doctors and surgery and things of that. Sometimes he allows the disease to take its course. And then he heals you on the other side. But until then, let's thank God for the healing that he gives. Let's praise him that we're still living and going today. And let's make good use of every day that we have.
psalmist prayed, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The prophet told Hezekiah, you need to, you're, gonna, uh, you're sick, you're going to die. You need to set your house in order. Well, guess what? That same thing could be said to each one of us, couldn't it? In some manner, in some way, we're sick too. Each one of us is dying every day, getting closer to the day when we're going to leave this earth and go out into eternity. We need to set our houses in order too. This morning, I wonder if you have a need that you want us to pray with you about, for you about. If we do, if you do, uh, you're welcome to come forward to the altar during this invitation time. We're going to have a time of prayer for you. A lot of you are on our prayer list that we uh, pray for every day. We're going to continue to do that. Uh, I can't, again, so I can't promise, by the word of God, I can't promise you that you're going to get healed here on this side of earth. I can promise you that if God doesn't heal you like he did Hezekiah, that God will give you grace like he did to Paul. And he'll give you the strength you need. And I can promise you that if you trust Jesus with your heart, that your soul is going to be healed. And that when you die, then your body's going to be healed as well.